if you if you want to not to lose that mark, you can uh, take a permission from the patient to put like a removable mark here, and then you can remove it later on. Abbas, can you use this one? Just I will remove it later on. So just put a small mark on the lower edge of the liver. Now, if you if you, if the liver was palpable, it's very important to comment in on 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 some points like. You have to comment on the edge. Is it uh, is it uh, soft? Is it uh, sharp? Is it rounded? So sharp or rounded is very important. You have to comment on the surface of the liver. Is it regular or not regular? Smooth or not? You have to comment on tenderness. Is the liver is tender or not? So if it's tender, indicating stretching of the capsule of the liver, would see it in the acute hepatitis or right-sided heart failure or liver abscess. Also, you have to comment on the pulsation of the liver, is it pulsatile or not pulsatile? And to know if the liver is pulsatile or not, just, put, just like you, you try to hold the liver by your right hand and you feel the pulsation of the liver if it's pulsatile. Then the liver span is more important than the uh, pulsation of the liver because some patient, the lower, uh, the, the, uh, the lower edge of the uh, lower border of the liver is palpable but the liver is not enlarged, and this is called uh, hepatic ptosis. Like emphysema, emphysematic patient, they will have ptosis of the liver, but they will not have uh, hepatomegaly. So you have to confirm enlargement of the liver by doing a liver span, and usually to do liver span will start from the upper border, sorry, from the upper side of the body, from the second intercostal space. And usually the expected upper margin or upper border of the liver in the sixth in the sixth rib. So we'll start from the second intercostal space. We can, s we can hear now resonant uh, uh, tone or resonant percussion note. Resonant. So we can see the changes of the note from the resonant to the So to the dull, to confirm that, that thing, you have to do maneuver, which is di tidal percussion. So when you listen to the dullness, you ask the patient to take de deep breathing and hold his breathing. Like this, the liver will come down. So Abbas, nafas, hold. So now became a resonant, barra nafas. Again, dull again, which is the tidal percussion. And this is confirming the upper border of the liver. Also, you can put a mark in the upper border of the liver and you can measure the liver span between the upper border and the lower border and usually the normal uh, liver span is 8, uh, sorry 10 plus minus 2 from 8 to 12 and this patient having a liver span is 8 which is normal liver span. So don't forget after doing that to uh, clean the area and remove the mark you did. Now I preferred, if you want to examine the liver, complete the liver examination by doing also auscultation like this, will not uh, forget if you, if you found an hepatomegaly, just don't forget to listen to the liver. And the very important things need to be listened on the liver. The first thing is the <coughs> venous hum and uh, uh, brewery. And usually, uh, and sometimes you can listen to the friction rub, which is rare in the liver. Actually, all of these is rare. We can, see, we can listen to the venous hum in portal hypertension. Usually, the venous hum is uh, low pitch, uh, uh, soft murmur, and usually increased with inspiration and indicating of portal hypertension. And sometimes we can, if we listen to the arterial brew, which is the systolic murmur, Usually, uh, the arterial brew indicating increased blood flow to the liver, and this we can see it in hepatocellular carcinoma. And this is also a very rare uh, sign. And in addition to friction rub, we can listen to the friction rub in the hepatitis, post liver biopsy, uh, and uh, gonococcal or chlamydial perihepatitis uh, syndrome. And usually, if you found the hepatomegaly, you have to listen on the liver. So like this, you will complete the liver examination by commenting on the size and mainly the liver spans, uh, span, edge, surface, tenderness, pulsation, and auscultation. Then uh, we'll move to the spleen and the maneuvers. The maneuver to do the, uh, to examine for splenomegaly is to put your left hand supporting the lower uh, ribs from the back and doing the palpation like what we did in the liver. 
uh, 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 trying to palpate the spleen by the lateral aspect of the forefinger, looking to the patient and asking the patient to take deep breathing in and out. Nafas uh, Abbas. So we are starting from the right iliac fossa because usually the spleen will enlarge uh, inferomedially. So during the expiration, you can move your hand. Nafas Abbas. Barra, nafas. Then move. Nafas. Out. Nafas. Out. Nafas. Out. So if you uh, reach the left coastal margin and do not uh, feel the spleen, doesn't mean that the spleen is not, bal not enlarged. Really not palpable, but maybe not, uh, maybe enlarged. So what you need to do, you need to do the uh, right lateral uh, palpation maneuver. Abbas, can you come to my side? Can you come to my side, please? Okay, and put the hand like this, if you can. Very good. Again, support the uh, ribs. And you don't need to start from the right iliac fossa. Unlikely the spleen will be there. So just start from uh, umbilical area or even the, uh, uh, below the left coastal margin and try to palpate for the uh, spleen. And so if not palpable, again, let's ask the patient to go back on, the, on, his, uh, on his back flat. Then confirm that by percussion. So percussion also will start from the right iliac fossa. So usually if there is no splenomegaly, the percussion note will be resonant up to the tropes area, which is the triangle between the left uh, coastal margin and the anterior axillary line and the sixth intercostal space. If we press here, or if you percuss here, so it's resonant, that's me, that's, that's, that means most likely the patient doesn't have splenomegaly. And to be the spleen to be valvable was supposed to be enlarged at least two times. So now if we have an, if we fit like a, a mass here in the left, uh, uh, left uh, hypochondrial area, the most important thing to differentiate between the spleen and the left kidney. Now, before uh, talking about that, we have to know how to examine the kidney. And usually the kidney you have to examine bimanually. So it's by bimanual examination, you have to put your left uh, hand uh, be behind the uh, flank area and press by the uh, right hand, and this is usually the kidney is palatable. That means when you press by your right hand, the lower pole of the kidney will hit your uh, left hand. And again, the, the same will do for the uh, uh, left kidney. You will put left hand behind the uh, lumbar area and press by the right hand, and you can do the ballotment, and usually the kidney is ballotable. Now, to differentiate between the left kidney and its largest spleen, there is some maneuvers like Usually the kidney with, with respiration moved inferiorly and laterally, but while the spleen inferomedially. And also percussion note over the spleen is dull while over the kidney is uh, resonant. Uh, although also uh, you can feel the splenic notch uh, and this is differentiating between the kidney and the spleen. Most important thing you can, you can't, you cannot go over the spleen because the spleen coming from up while you can go over the kidney, if you feel the kidney. Uh, and usually also auscultation sometimes can help. If you found a, a spleen, don't forget to listen to the spleen. And if you listen to the splenic friction rub, that's indicating of splenic infarction. And usually uh, you cannot hear a friction rub over the kidney. So just put your set scope over the spleen and listen for the friction rub. Now, we'll move now to the, uh, to the ascites. So if you want to examine the ascites, we have uh, two things to do. The first thing is the shifting dullness, and the second thing is the fluid thrill. So if we start with the shifting dullness, usually we start from the uh, zephosternal area and percuss to reach up to the most resonant uh, percussion note. So that's resonant. Now, if we found the most resonant area, because usually even if the patient having massive ascites, usually the central uh, 
resonance, resonance will not be disappeared. You always, always, uh, almost always there is an resonant percussion note in the preambulacral area or the central area. Then if, we f if you want to move now, you have to move your hand. So you put your fingers looking to toward the feet and then move away from you. Resonant. Resonant. Now looking, looking for flank uh, dullness. Now, the flank dullness itself, to, to find a flank dullness in ascites, you have to have at least two liter of fluid inside the abdomen. And this sign, flank uh, dullness, indicating of ascites is a, a, a sensitive, uh, it's a sensitive but not a specific, because if it is a thick fat, you can give some dullness. So the most sensitive way is doing the shifting dullness. Now let's imagine we found an dullness in the Flank area, now ask the patient to come to right lateral position. Uh, Abbas, can you come right to me? Like uh, this, thank you. And then you have to wait for uh, 30 seconds to one minute, just allowing the fluid to come down, and then you will start to percuss again. Now, if you percuss on the same area, you put your finger with dullness on the flat position or supine position, now it, it, will, it, uh, it will become uh, dullness, and then Again, move your hand down till you reach the dullness down, and this is what we call a shifting dullness. Now, in some patients with massive ascites, fluid trail will be positive, and this needs a help from assistant, as, uh, either uh, uh, another assistant or the patient. Ask the patient to put his uh, hand on the midline. Abbas, can you put your hand just here, please? Both hands like this on the abdomen and press firmly. So, so has to put the hand on the midline and put your uh, left hand on the abdominal wall and tap the other uh, part of the abdomen by the right fingers. And if the patient having uh, massive ascites, uh, a lot of fluid, you will feel the thrill or the waves in the left hand. Thank you, Abba. Now, after finishing from uh, the, uh, the, the, the organomegaly and ascites, don't forget to examine or palpate for the inguinal lymph nodes as well the impulse for the inguinal area. Just palpate the inguinal area and ask the patient to cough to feel the impulse. And lastly, uh, at the, the fourth part of uh, abdomen examination is the auscultation which is very important. And the most important thing need to be auscultated in the abdomen. The first thing is the bowel sound. Second thing, renal brewery and aortic brewery. And this is a, a, a very important, as we said before, also the friction rub and uh, venous harm and, and, and the hepatic brewery. Now, if we listen to the, if we want to listen to the bowel sound, the best area to listen is below the umbilicus and literal about one to two centimeters. And uh, to say there is uh, absent bowel sound, you have to wait at least for four minutes to say it's paralytic alias or absent bowel sound. And usually the Bowel sound can be heard every 10 seconds once or uh, at a minimum every 30 seconds. But to say there is no bowel sound, upset bowel sound, you have to listen for four minutes continuously. And also don't, listen, don't forget to listen to the arteri to renal brewery above the umbilicus, one to two centimeters. You can listen to the renal brewery. Also, you can listen to the aortic brewery in this area. And as we said, don't forget to listen to the liver and the spleen. Now, to continue your abdomen examination, you have to do many things. The first thing, you have to do digital perrectal uh, uh, examination with a part of the abdomen examination. Don't forget that. And you have to do also urine diabetics, and you have to examine other part of the body related to the GI system, like the lower limb for, lower, for ankle edema. You want to examine the chest for by basal crepitation for overload. You, call, you want to examine, if you want to examine the chest, very important for gynecomastia and spider nevis. Also, you have to examine the lower back for uh, pitting edema. Now, if you, if you finish your examination, don't forget to cover, to cover your patient and thank patient for his cooperation. Thank you, Abbas, very much. Thank you.